Hello everybody, welcome to more Minecraft Science. Um, today I'm actually doing this on the Bob server and we are going to be talking today about uh, genetics. Hello everyone, welcome to Minecraft Science. Um, today, as I said, we're talking about genetics and it all starts with this thing. This thing behind me is the DNA strand. Okay, now, the DNA strand is made up of these things here called base pairs. Now, uh, base pairs are made up of four chemicals and uh, those, I say chemicals, they're actually proteins. They're made up of four proteins and they join together in certain ways. Um, if you look here, um, the red and the green join together and the yellow and the blue and it doesn't matter what order they come in, um, they'll always be the same. That's your building blocks for genetics. You'll know, you'll normally see this as a spirally type thing, uh, but not today. Now, if you coil up enough of this stuff, it makes these. Now, this is a chromosome, and you'll notice that it come, it's banded, and the reason why it's banded is because um, each band is known as a gene. And this is going to be a problem because I don't have any weapons. I'll be back after I fought this guy. Right, there we go. And I've got some delicious brains, also made out of protein. Um, okay, so each of these bands is a gene. Now, you have uh, 46 chromosomes in total. You get 23 from your mum and you get 23 from your dad. Now... Um, these chromosomes, they make up you and you'll get these and they form in pairs. So you get 23 pairs of chromosomes each um, and they'll each have the same gene, but they might have different versions of the same gene. So if this is the gene for, I don't know, height, in fact, height is several different genes. So, for example, you would have the same chromosome from if this is your dad's chromosome, you get one from your mum. And it would also have a height gene and they basically uh, duke it out to find out which one is going to be the one that shows up. Now you have what's known as a genotype and a phenotype. A genotype is what your genes tell you. So for example if this, uh, let's do a hair colour for example, if this was the brown haired gene and you, your dad had a red haired gene um, you would get um, that would be your genotype. So you would have uh, brown red as your genotype. Your phenotype is what shows up on the surface and I'm going to get back to that in a minute. But first let's go for the guy who made all things possible, uh, Gregor Mendel. And there's Foxy just leaving us alone. Um, okay, Gregor Mendel, um, he decided that um, he would look at pea plants and when I say pea plants I mean peas literally peas um, but peas of course have to grow through pollination and that's pollination of flowers and these are flowers he used um, two flowers he used the red kind and used the white kind and what he did was he got the pollen from one of them and um, fertilized one plant with the other now, um, then he let them grow um, as well. They made seeds and then he let those seeds grow. Now, what he found was he found that all the seeds that grow from those plants were red ones. So if this is the first generation of white and red, all the babies would have red genes, all of them, absolutely every single one of them. Okay. Now, what he found is if he got these two flowers of the second generation and he cross-fertilised those, he got this pattern. Three of them, well, I say three of them, 75% of the flowers would be red and 25% of the flowers would be white. Now, there is a reason for this and the reason is of the chromosomes. Each of these flowers got one chromosome from mum and got one chromosome from dad. And the colour chromosome, I say chromosome, 
sorry, I meant genes. One gene from mum, which is white, and one gene from dad, which was red. Okay, so what they ended up with is they had a fight, and what you can tell from this is that red is the dominant gene for colours for peas, and white is recessive. Okay, now over here, because they all of these plants have one dominant and one recessive gene, okay, most of the plants will be red, so most of the offspring will be red, but occasionally two of those genes will come together and they will form a white one. Now, we use this using Punnett squares. Now, Punnett squares are special. Now, if you look here, I've got a D for dad. Now, for example, let's do the first generation first because it's easier. Okay, first generation. Um, you have dad, and I'm going to do dad. Dad has red. He has two red genes. Okay, so very uncool. Mum, mum has, and I've got an M for mum here, mum has two white genes. Okay, now what you do is you bring them across. So in this square, you're going to have dad's red gene, and you're also going to have dad's red gene in here, and you're going to have a red gene here and a red gene here. Now, because white is recessive, I'm only going to give them one block. Okay, and you also have mum's white gene here. And you always have mum's white gene here. Always have mum's white gene here, and you have the white gene here. Now, if we go up and we have a look, bouncy, 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 bouncy. Right, what you see is you see that every single one of those plants has a dominant red gene okay and it has a small white recessive gene okay so each one of those plants has two genes a red one and a white one the red one is dominant okay which means that's what shows up on the surface which is called the phenotype so the genotype as you can see is red and white okay but the phenotype is red phenotype is what shows up on the surface OK, I'm going to reset this for the second generation, which means, well, I'll show you what that means in a second. OK, I've reset the Punnett square. OK, this is a Punnett square, by the way. OK, now, if you remember, each, per, each parent of the next generation had a red gene and a white gene. OK, and that's true for both mum and dad. OK, so red and red and white. Now, if you bring this one across, okay, you'll see, if we bring dad's red genes across, red gene, red gene, if we bring his white genes across, he will have white and white. If you bring mum's red gene down, red gene, red gene, and if you bring her white gene down, you get white gene and white gene. Now, let's look at the top, dun dun dun, there's a big reveal. Okay, you'll see that you have one child that is uh, red, red, okay, and that is known as homozygous, okay, which means they're red and they're red. So heterozygous, homozygous, homozygous means the same, homo means the same, hetero means different, so there are different genes. So we've got a red and a white, and a red and a white here, and we've got a homozygous white, so we've got homozygous red, homozygous white, heterozygous red and white, okay, which means that in this one, the flower is going to be red, in this one, the flower is also going to be red, even though it's got the white, because the red is dominant, this one is going to be red, and this one is going to be white, okay, and that only works because it's got two of the same colour, okay, that is what's known as um, homozygous, okay, so if the genes are the same, they're homozygous. If the genes are different, they're heterozygous. Okay, that's how it works in plants. Okay, now um, the same thing works for you, and I'm going to talk about that in a second. Okay, here you see a mummy and a daddy. 
Um, I'm not sure which is which, but let's call Mummy Daddy, okay? So, Mummy has brown eyes and black hair. Daddy has blue eyes and red hair. Now, um, black hair or brown hair is dominant. Red hair or blonde hair is recessive, okay? Brown eyes are dominant. Blue eyes are recessive, okay? So are green eyes. Green eyes are recessive as well, okay? And the same thing works for their children as well, okay? Now, if you have... Um, Let's go back to the Punnett Square and show you this way. Sorry, this is the first time I've done this in not a creative server, so bear with me. Okay, so we have Daddy. We're going to assume, for now, for now, he is homozygous brown eyes. And we know that Mum has to be homozygous blue eyes. Okay? We know that she has to be because it's a recessive gene. Now... And the sun's going down. That's a bummer. Okay, so we know that in here, all of Dad's children are going to have a brown eye gene from him. And all of Mum's children are going to have a blue eye gene from her. Now, that means that all their babies will be heterozygous with brown eyes. So heterozygous genotype with... Um, brown eyes as their phenotype now this works okay this way however if mother was heterozygous blue I've gone it the wrong way okay so that's mom that's dad okay now if dad was I'm gonna leave the blues because we know that mom has uh, blue eyes okay if dad has is actually not heterozygous but homozy uh, not homozygous but heterozygous and actually has um, a genotype of brown and blue his phenotype over there would still be brown now ignore the people chatting in the corner however that means that these two children are going to have brown eyes but these two children here 50% of his children will have blue eyes because what he's actually hiding in his genes is that he has a blue eyed gene, which is how brown eyed parents get blue eyed children. Okay? Could be even more different. If mum was also brown eyed but also homozygous, what you would end up with, and I'm going to take away these what you would end up with is okay taken away mum's genes what you would end up with is that you can have parents who both have brown eyes and you could still get a blue-eyed child okay so it is possible now Genes are weird and wonderful creatures. However, what it is not possible to get, okay, it's not possible to get um, a blue-eyed child from two, from one parent who is homozygous brown, okay? Not possible. So, if the, if the child is homozygous dominant, um, you will not get... A blue-eyed child it's impossible okay so if these two parents had a baby you might not know what eye color it is you might not know what hair color it is um, until it comes out because you don't know what's hiding behind the dominant genes okay the dominant black and blue brown genes okay so that has been Minecraft science I hope it's helped you a little bit um, and I'll see you next time